Hey Drew, what'd you do? Why are you? I was yawning. Oh, I'm super tired this morning. I don't know why. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I don't know. It just happens sometimes. It does. I got a good amount of sleep and everything, but anyway, um, we are here to talk about really expensive pens. Yes. A couple in particular, and one really cheap one because I wanted Should've to throw it in tux. there. So we got the Visconti Medici. No, Magnifico. I keep Who doing would, that. Well, no, no, no. no that. That's fine. That's fine because it is uh, named and modeled after Lorenzo de Medici. Yes. The 15th century banker and Diplomat and basically established the modern banking system. Their family and more or less Medici family and more or less ran Florence for you know a good chunk of his life. Yeah, and look at this box though. Yeah, for real. this is this is I mean this is heavy. This is right? legit metal here. Yeah, um, it's got the uh, little portions of the Medici family crest on here, and you'll see those in the pen That's as cool. well. That's cool. That is hefty. I mean, and of course the crinkly plastic makes oh, yes. a comeback. Oh yes. Gotta love the Visconti crinkly plastic. Gotta love the crinkly plastic. That's when you know I would be disappointed if you know it wasn't it's clean. there. You know it's clean. So there you see the uh, the same fleur de lis, which is uh, a, a portion of the family crest. The family crest has like some like, I always thought they were pepperonis, but you know, they're little <laughs> red circles. But then these guys are kind of in a circle toward the middle there. Yes. And Brian, this is actual marble here. That pen is baller. This is real marble. Yeah, um, not I'm, marble dust, not any of this kind of stuff. It's like straight up carved mm -hmm. out of stone. And so the pattern is gonna look different on every pen. Yeah, but and you're always gonna have a white texture. You know, I haven't, there's not a ton of variation in these. All the ones I've seen have been predominantly, you know, this, you know, burgundy rust color up at the top and then, you know, mm -hmm. a streak of white kind of going through the middle. They're pretty consistent. They're all beautiful. Absolutely. And this is um, sterling silver. And the uh, Visconti press release says that this was chiseled. So I'm not entirely sure if that was chiseled by hand. It even said something about using old techniques. So I'm not entirely sure what goes into that. I think there's some handwork involved in there. Yeah, yeah, so that is pretty cool. And it is the uh, hook safe lock oh. with a ruthenium plated 23 karat palladium nib. So, just a gorgeous, gorgeous is pen. Is that one the ruthenium? Oh, I sorry, no, it's not. No, no it's not. not. This one's not. The other one's ruthenium. We'll sorry. get to that. Right. My mistake. How dare you, Drew? I know. Um, and it is a power filler. So, you unscrew the sterling silver knob here, and ba-boom. Blame got out. drink in there. I like that it's not like a bright, shiny silver. It's like this aged looking thing. Like, this pen looks so renaissance. Like, one of my favorite movies is The Count of Monte Cristo. And this just looks like it just could be straight up out of that movie, for sure. And I think that they picked these colors, um, you know, based on the, the Medici family, you know, crest and colors. And I think even the amount of facets has something to do with the uh, Duomo in Florence. So, yeah, I mean, it's Visconti. Every, every little aspect of this has a story. Every, it all has a reason behind it, which, you know, at the price, which I think this one is uh, 1916. Yes. You know, it is a chunk of change. However, that's $1,900, not $19. Sorry if there was confusion there. Um, but there's something to say about it, and that, that's something that I appreciate. You know, there are a lot of, you know, you know, luxury brands out there that sell, you know, things at this price. And they might have, like, a theme or a, a franchise behind it or something like that. Or just a name sometimes. Yeah. But when you have a lot of different aspects you can talk about and understand why and what goes into it, you yeah. know, it's a little bit more understandable. So you gonna you gonna pick one of these up? Yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe one of each. You know what? I was thinking about this, and I'm really glad that you don't pay me in store credit because I wouldn't be able to feed myself. <laughs> you, 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 your, yeah. your, your child would starve. He would. And uh, yeah, your wife would probably not uh, not want much to do. She would have she would have words with me. Yeah, probably. Um, we're going to mix it up, though, because I don't want everybody to be like, you only talk about expensive pens. So we're going to throw a super cheap one in the mix. Um, we have this beautiful Pilot Varsity. Why did you bring a Pilot this is actually, Varsity here? This is actually vintage. This is the old design. Uh, they have been since redesigned. This, this one looks a little more retro. I think it was designed like redesigned like two or three years ago. Um, but I want to talk about how to eyedropper convert these. Because they are, they are marketed as a disposable fountain pen. Um, so they come pre-inked. This is the green one, hence the green ink on my fingers. Uh, but you can actually, once these things are used up, you can reuse them. And it's nothing that complicated. I've seen some of the craziest hacks that people have tried to do. I've seen people take an ink syringe and like cut off the syringe and try to like fit it on there and push ink through it. I've seen people like drill holes into it, fill it, and then like epoxy over it, plug it up. What? 
like at that point, aren't you just doing more? Like you're doing the, a lot the, of work. The amount of work that it takes to buy a new one. Um, perhaps, but I'm gonna show you a life hack for this. Literally, all you have to do Wait. is just grab. Okay, oh, Andy, yeah. you ready to go? So this yes. is this is inked up. So I'm gonna get a little inky fingers. But the whole the whole nib and section, everything just pulls right out of the pen, and then you have an eyedropper convertible body. What? It's, it's just friction fit. That's all it takes. So why are people drilling holes? I don't know because I think people are afraid to yank their pen apart. Oh geez. But well, I'm that came to, out. I'm that seemed like it break. came out really easily. It did. This is this is the first time I've taken. Uh, well, okay, I took it out once prior to this just to do it, but it was just as easy the first time. And I'm as guessing as it's as just as easy on the new models, right? Nothing's yeah. changed. Yeah. Yeah. So you just take an ink syringe. Boom, you fill it up once it's all cleaned out, obviously. Put whatever ink you want in there. It holds a decent amount of ink, too. It's like two and a half mils or three mils or something like that. And then you just take it and you jam it back on in there. All right, Brian. Well, thanks for making a sell out of and varsities. You run it. Yeah. Jeez. That's it. That's all it takes. So you can pick one of those up for three bucks. Hmm. Now let's talk about a $2,000 pen. <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> it's a nice natural We're organic going like, shift. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so this one, I'm gonna let you touch this one because now my fingers are all easy. <laughs> Probably a good idea. This one is crazy looking. This is the Visconti Torpedo. Torpedo. Yeah. And this is just very Visconti, right? It's like a really interesting contrast. So these are both limited edition pens that come out, came out fairly recently. It's a completely different style than the Magnifico, which completely. is super like classic Florence. You look at that and then you look at this and you're like, this does not, this is like more of the like, you think of the Italian Renaissance with the Magnifico, you think of like Italian like race cars and stuff like that. Right, like I think like this the is- the technology side of it. Right, Italian. this is I think uh, loosely based on kind of uh, the futuristic um, artistic movement from like the 30s and the 40s. Like yeah. how in the 30s and 40s we thought the future would look like. Yeah, you know, sort of like a carousel of progress, if yes, you will. Yes, yes. Which like, is my favorite ride at Disney, by yeah, the way. It's pretty cool. Now you're gonna get that song stuck in my head. But <laughs> it's, it's a uh, great big oh beautiful God. tomorrow. He went there, he went there. He went Shining there. on the light of every day. <laughs> God. <laughs> anyway. I think it's the first time I've ever sung on camera. <laughs> well, let's anyway. not make it the last. <laughs> um, so it's made with I think they're calling this unidirectional carbon fiber. So most of the yeah. time you see carbon fiber, it's, it's, a, it's a weave. It's a woven, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, helps give, give it its strength. This is very strong as well, obviously, but. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to work with. Yes, right? it's super hard to work with. Like, even the weave is really hard to work with. It's, it's anyone who's ever dealt with carbon fiber, you know, it's a, it's a tricky material. And uh, it's difficult to get the weave pattern to look right. It's difficult to get it to hold correctly. And from what I understand, it's even more difficult to have it unidirectional like this. And in fact, when they were telling us about this pen, they said they have to basically throw away one pen for every one that they make because it's that difficult. They like a challenge, apparently. Yeah, which is, again, part of why it costs what it costs because you're basically paying for two pens. Right. I mean, they don't make an entire pen, but like the material that they make for it, it kind of gets scrapped. So this is the one with the ruthenium nib. That's got the ruthenium so nib. This yeah. has the black nib on there. Yes. So the gunmetal uh, Gun metal looking, style. which we had. We had that on the Opera Master. Crimson Tide mm -hmm. with the gunmetal trim. Can you? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Drew, come on. He just wants to hold the pen. Um, I, you know, me personally, I like big pens. I like heavy pens. This one checks all those boxes for me. Just the weight and the balance of this pen is phenomenal. And it's got some nicer touches in here too. Like, you know, the machining on it is really nice with all the trim pieces. You know, it really complements well the carbon fiber. And then, you know, the ink window that they have in mm -hmm. here, it's flush with the carbon fiber. It's not proud of right. it. So it's, it feels very smooth, very contiguous throughout the pen. It looks like it should be on three different levels, like the the, the, the metal and then the carbon fiber and then the acrylic window, mm -hmm. but the acrylic and the carbon fiber right there flush against each other. So yeah. it just, it took a lot of time to do this clearly. And the threads, they're not like sharp threads. They're like kind of no. rounded off. They don't bother they, your hand at all. They feel really, really good. And it's got the double reservoir power filler, as you can mm -hmm. see with the ink window here. So this one's yes. going to have that second ink chamber for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, two pretty expensive pens and one super cheap one. So maybe, uh, you know, I figure it's like, obviously with these types of pens, like I'm not even buying one of these for myself unless, you know, there's a late birthday gift that Rachel wants to surprise me with, which I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the case here. No. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, these are... These are the kind of pens that even if you're not gonna buy one, which most people aren't, 
um, at least you can appreciate the technology. You can appreciate the design and kind of what goes into it. And it gives a little bit of inspiration. Oh, that looks good. It gives some inspiration for like what, what could possibly be. And usually when there's stuff like this, they're like pushing the envelope as far as design and technology with these limited edition <laughs> I like how you still have the plastic. Um, Inconspicuous. You know, when you, uh, when you push the envelope like that, then usually some of these design elements can like trickle down onto less expensive pens. That's true. So that's kind of All about innovation. So, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this inaccessibly expensive uh, pen feature in <laughs> everybody. Right now. Everybody needs a grail, right? Yes, um, we are going to be doing tomorrow. Oh, we didn't even talk about the fact that it's it's Tuesday today and not Monday. That's okay. They know we did, we did the hundred thousand subscriber giveaway on YouTube yesterday. Which, if you haven't seen that already, go check that out because we're giving away a Visconti Opera Master Luna. And uh, so we we opted not to do right now yesterday. We're doing it today. We are. And then we're going to do another one tomorrow. So we're going to be back on our regular schedule, and I think Rachel might be on for that one. We're going to talk about a new pen brand, potential pen brand. So be ready for that. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. See you. Right on.